all permittees are required to monitor for total suspended solids, or TSS. We want to help you manage the TSS in your facility's stormwater runoff by showing practical best management practices, or BMPs. TSS are solids suspended in water that are carried off-site in stormwater runoff. They include a wide variety of material, such as silt and clay particles, plant material, and debris, or byproducts from industrial processes. Monitoring TSS is important because stormwater runoff high in TSS negatively impacts water quality. It carries harmful pollutants like metals into surface waters, it smothers fish, eggs, and blocks sunlight from underwater plants, and it adds to the cost of filtering and treating drinking water. Reducing TSS in stormwater runoff reduces the negative environmental impacts from both the sediment and any attached pollutants. Controlling TSS can be as simple as properly managing and controlling sources of sediment. Move materials, products, and processes inside into storm-resistant shelters or shelter facility loading docks. Ensure outdoor containers have lids and do not leak. You can even berm around your activities and materials to prevent contaminated runoff. Increase good housekeeping practices by frequently sweeping high traffic and loading, unloading areas. Vegetation strips are very effective at filtering out TSS from stormwater runoff. Covered or indoor chutes or conveyors prevent spillage during loading and unloading. Use sediment filter socks and bags near stormwater drains. Our thought was that any metals that we might have that would be exceeding their limits are going to be directly tied to the TSS. So if we could lower the TSS, we would thereby lower our metal pollutants. Where is our TSS coming from? So most of it's coming from the ground. <coughs> in, uh, we used to have class five material in the yard. So we talked to a number of individuals and we said, is there a better material that we can put in the yard or is there something different we can do? And uh, there were some suggestions about doing concrete in the yard, but uh, that was cost prohibitive. So we started to look at other materials suitable for the storage yard. And one of them that was brought up was crushed concrete. So we completely removed all of the class five from the yard and put in place crushed concrete. So the, the crushed concrete didn't work as well as we had hoped. It, it would right away. Uh, our TSS spiked right away and we said, whoa, what happened here? So what we did was we initially expanded the space and had it about a 15 foot perimeter on the outside of uh, just ditch grass. Uh, so we tried that for a while, got some better results, uh, not quite as much as what we thought. We also discovered our volume of water was overwhelming the area. So we thought, well, we'll expand the area further, the grass area. That will give us uh, more area to filter out materials. Plus, during torrential rainfalls, it'll give us a spot to really allow the water to pool up and pond and then infiltrate. I like to think this is all uh, a continuing work in progress that you have to work at just year after year, always evaluating what you have, but it is the latest iteration of it. Or two years ago, we did the final expansion, adding more green space, but at the same time, we also added different levels of aggregate. The different levels of aggregate help us to filter out our TSS. They also act as a buffer during uh, heavier to uh, torrential rainfalls. So we added basically a berm of, of different aggregates uh, to filter, but also to slow down the water before it enters the green space so it can pull up, then move through the permanent silt fences, and then move into the concrete area before it finally goes into the outfall. In late 2014, we expanded. We added 12,000 square feet of additional shipping and storage space. So when we were in the process of uh, developing that plan, we knew that we had a system that couldn't necessarily handle these larger volumes of water from a stormwater perspective. And we said, is there anything that we can do while we're expanding that'll help manage that? And we came up with a, a roof drain system. So the new area, the 12,000 square feet, has its own roof drains. But then the section of building that we tied into, we also put in roof drains into that section. So combined, we're saving about 100,000 gallons of water per year from entering the, the storage yards. The other thing is the amount of space that we needed to put a pond in uh, was a lot more than we were able to sacrifice. As you can see, our product is very large. Space is at a premium. We're on a very small site here, about 11 acres. So we need as much space as we can to move product around. So we had to pursue different avenues for our BMPs. And 
really, I think we've ended up going down a road that is much better for the site. If non-structural BMPs are not the best solution for TSS, there are engineered options. Three engineered structural BMP options that are very effective at filtering the sediment from stormwater runoff are 1. Sedimentation systems, which include detention ponds and wetland treatment systems. 2. Infiltration systems, which include trenches and basins. And 3. Bioretention systems, which include rain gardens. Some industrial sectors are prohibited by the Environmental Protection Agency from installing infiltration systems. Make sure your facility is authorized to use them before implementing any engineered structural BMP. More BMP information can be found on the agency's website. Search for the Industrial Stormwater Program homepage, the Industrial Stormwater BMP Guidebook, or sector-specific BMPs found in our Steps to Compliance.